pretty easy to relaunch the kite when it's strong wind, but how difficult it can be when there is not much wind. My name is Petar Pavlovich, I love sharing my kite surf experience with you and in this episode I want to talk with you about relaunching the kite in light wind conditions. Over the years kite surfing and teaching, I saw many kite surfers with good level of riding having big issue with relaunching the kite in light wind conditions. It was also my case of course in my first years of kite surfing, pulling aggressively the bar, getting angry because nothing works definitely was not helpful. Relaunching the kite in shallow water is definitely much easier than being in deep water. So we'll mainly focus on how to relaunch your kite while being in deep water. First we'll see everything you have to do to relaunch your kite from the water in case you don't have the board with you. But I will also give you some tips if you still have the board on how to use the board so you save some energy. If you're not so experienced riding in light wind and your kite falls in the water, you will most probably find yourself in this situation your kite falling on the water on the trailing edge. So the canopy of the kite goes under the water. This happens when you are pulling too much on the bar while riding or while pulling too much the backline while relaunching your kite. In this situation it is definitely not helpful to pull the bar or the backlines to relaunch your kite. First we have to turn the kite on its front tube. We definitely want to let go of the bar and strongly swim upwind. If you are in shallow water just walk upwind. This will create tension on the front lines which are connected on the front tube. How you are swimming or walking upwind, the canopy slowly is getting out from the water and starts getting wind which is helping the kite to turn. If this doesn't work, then keep on doing everything the same and grab the center line over the bar and shake it towards you. If the wind is too light and none of this is working out, then turn your face in the wind direction and swim upwind as fast as possible. Put the board on your feet, bend and stretch your legs aggressively. This will create a similar effect as swimming upwind and it is a lot less tiring. Now it's time to be patient and gentle with steering the backline. On stronger wind, it is safer to bring the kite slowly on the edge of the wind window and gently launch your kite, especially in shallow water. But on light wind, might be super difficult to succeed with this method, because you should be extra gentle and patient with steering. So on light wind, I recommend to relaunch your kite from the power zone. So the kite immediately flies higher where there is more wind. The idea is to turn the kite so it's almost falling on the trailing edge. And in this moment we want to release the line so that the kite gets to fly towards 1, 12 or 11 o'clock. Here we have to understand the logic of how the kite is flying in the wind window when we are pulling completely the bar and when we are completely depowering the bar. I don't want to talk to you now about kite aerodynamic because it could become too long and difficult to understand. I will leave this topic for another episode. I will explain you this in the way that I understood it for the first time. So if you imagine that my hand is the kite, here's the front tube, here's the trailing edge. When we pull the bar, we are kinda closing the kite and the kite becomes smaller. This way we are compressing the wind and in strong wind conditions the kite starts pulling us. But if we keep the bar pulled in for too long, in light wind conditions the kite might backstall. I was always imagining, aha, I pull the bar, so I'm closing the kite and the kite starts pulling, but also becomes smaller, so in light wind, the kite starts falling on his trailing edge. But once I completely depower the bar, the kite becomes bigger and starts flying again. And it will always start flying towards the edge of the wind window, where the front tube and the middle strut are directed. You can picture it like an arrow. So when the front tube is on the water, the kite actually wants to go under the water, but it is not possible. So our idea is to turn the kite so that the front tube and the middle strut are facing around 12 o'clock and then we want to release the line so the kite just follow its arrow and goes flying towards the edge of the wind window. Now we'll see different methods in light wind on how to manage to turn your kite and make him fly again. Make sure that the bar is completely depowered. Take one backline with two fingers, just in front of the floater. 
If you don't feel enough tension, then take it just a bit further if there is still a thicker line to hold on to. Do not pull for the thin line. The idea is to swim backwards as strong as possible to keep the lines on tension. In shallow water, it will be easy just by standing or even slowly walking upwind. Here you have to be patient with pulling and hopefully the kite will turn. If after a while it doesn't work, do not shake the backline aggressively, this will definitely not help. Let this backline go and grab the other backline so the kite swings through the power zone and eventually turns. If this still doesn't work with so much swimming upwind, try to put yourself on your belly and float towards the kite while you are still pulling on the backline. It might help the kite to start turning. And as soon as you see that the kite started turning, it is important to again start swimming upwind so you keep the front lines on tension. And now we have to think logic. So once you see that the kite starts turning on its trailing edge and the arrow is facing around 12 o'clock, you want to gradually start depowering the line as much as possible, so the kite starts flying in his arrow direction. Once the kite is in the air, completely let go of the line and gently hold on to your bar. When the wind is so light, you often have to play a bit more with the back line. So once the kite starts turning on its trailing edge and you release the back line, it can happen that the kite starts flying just towards, let's say, 3 or 2 o'clock, which could not be high enough for the kite to stay stable in the air. So you want to pull deep power, pull deep power, pull deep power, that the arrow faces more towards 12 o'clock. Here you have to make sure to be extra gentle when you pull again after deep powering. This is why it's better to do it just with two fingers and not with all your hand. If you pull slightly too much, your kite will fall on the trailing edge and you have to restart the process from the beginning. If it's possible for you, I recommend keeping your board on your feet while relaunching the kite. This will create enough resistance on the water so you don't have to spend so much energy in swimming upwind. Common mistakes made while depowering the line just stretching the arm thinking that this is enough deep powered. Sometimes you have to move all your body forward so you can deep power the line properly. Really important to keep in mind, if you are able to turn the kite, you are able to relaunch it. So if your kite keeps on falling on the trailing edge, do not get angry because this will definitely not help you. You want to keep calm, be more gentle and focus on the arrow. Also, if for any reason you are not able to relaunch your kite, make sure you know how to perform self-rescue, which you can see in my previous episode. As well on my Patreon, you are able to see a short tutorial of an advanced technique of relaunching the kite in light wind. If you didn't yet, please subscribe and I will see you in the next episode. Bravo, 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 strong, 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 str